What can we do about this downright scary situation? For one thing, we need a very different concept of money. It's time more people ask themselves and their governments four simple questions. Around the world, governments borrow money at interest from private banks. Government debt is a major component of total debt, and servicing that debt takes a big chunk of our taxes. Now we know that banks simply create the money they lend, and that governments have given them permission to do this. So the first question is, why do governments choose to borrow money from private banks at interest when government could create all the interest-free money it needs itself? And the second big question is, why create money as debt at all? Why not create money that circulates permanently and doesn't have to be perpetually reborrowed in interest in order to exist? The third question, how can a money system that can only function with perpetually accelerating growth be used to build a sustainable economy? Isn't it logical that perpetually accelerating growth and sustainability are incompatible? And finally, what is it about our current system that makes it totally dependent on perpetual growth? What needs to be changed to allow the creation of a sustainable economy? At one time, charging any interest on a loan was called usury and was subject to severe penalties, including death. Every major religion forbade usury. Most of the arguments made against the practice were moral. It was held that money's only legitimate purpose was to facilitate the exchange of real goods and services. Any form of making money from simply having money was regarded as the act of a parasite or of a thief. However, as the credit needs of commerce increased, the moral arguments eventually gave way to the argument that lending involves risk and loss of opportunity to the lender and therefore attempting to make a profit from lending is justified. Today these notions seem quaint. Today the idea of making money from money is held as an ideal to strive for. Why work when you can get your money to work for you? However, in trying to envision a sustainable future, it's very clear that the charging of interest is both a moral and a practical problem. Imagine a society and economy that can endure for centuries because, instead of plundering its capital stores of energy, it restricts itself to present-day income. No more wood is harvested than grows in the same period. All energy is renewable, solar, gravitational, geothermal, magnetic, and whatever else we discover. This society lives within the limits of its non-renewable resources by reusing and recycling everything, and the population just replaces itself. Such a society could never function using a money system utterly dependent on perpetually accelerating growth. A stable economy would need a money supply at least capable of remaining stable without collapsing. Let's say the total volume of this stable money supply is represented by this big circle. Let's also imagine that money lenders must actually have existing money to lend. If some people within this money supply begin systematically lending money at interest, their share of the money supply will grow. If they continually re-loan, at interest, all the money that gets paid back, what's the inevitable result? Whether it's gold, fiat, or debt money doesn't matter. The money lenders will end up with all the money. And after the foreclosures and bankruptcies are all filed, they'll get all the real property too. Only if the proceeds of lending at interest were evenly distributed among the population would this central problem be solved. Heavy taxation of bank profits might accomplish this goal, but then why would banks want to be in business? If we were ever able to free ourselves of the current situation, we could imagine banking run as a non-profit service to society, dispersing its interest earnings as a universal citizen dividend, or lending without charging interest at all.
If it is the fundamental nature of the system that causes the problems, tinkering with the system cannot ever solve those problems. The system itself must be replaced. Many monetary critics call for a return to gold-based money, claiming that gold has a long history of reliability. They ignore the many scams that can be played with gold, shaving coins, debasing the metal, cornering the market, all of which were abundantly practiced in ancient Rome and contributed to its fall. Some advocate silver, it being more abundant than gold and therefore more difficult to corner. Many question the need to bring back precious metals at all. No one wants to go back to carrying heavy sacks of coins to go shopping. It's a certainty that paper, digital, plastic, or more likely biometric ID money would be the real medium of trade with the same potential for creating unlimited debt money we have now. Beyond that, if gold again became the sole legal basis of money, those who have no gold would suddenly have no money. Other monetary reform advocates have concluded that greed and dishonesty are the main problems and that there may be better ways to create an honest and equitable money system than returning to silver or gold. Inventive minds have proposed a variety of alternate ways to create money. Many private barter systems create money as debt, much as banks do, but it is done openly and without charging interest. An example is a barter system in which debt is expressed as pledges of hours of work, all work being valued equally at a dollar figure that then allows hours to be equated with the dollar price of goods. This kind of money system can be set up by anyone who can devise a way to do the accounting and find willing and trustworthy participants. Setting up a local barter money system, even if it were little used now, would be prudent emergency planning for any community.